just get myself all organized here. It was a wonderful day yesterday, <coughs> absolutely. I didn't give a testimony because a lot of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about this morning and stuff. And, uh, yeah. Well, title of my talk tonight is, you know, there was a, an old saying, um, we used to see it in old movies. We had a little paper boy and he said, he used to go, extra, extra, read all about it. Do you remember that? Remember that? Those statements? Yeah? Extra, extra, read all about it. I want to talk about Christ's love. Do we believe that Christ loves us? We know that Christ loves us. And the Word of God tells us that. That's what we need to talk about. The Word of God tells us that He loves us. And the world, well, as we saw yesterday, um, there's some people believe and some people don't believe, you know. But we know for a certainty that Christ loves us. Let's go to the first scripture. Let's go to 1 John 4, please, verse 10. <coughs> Everybody there? wonderful scripture it says herein is love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins an atonement for our sins over the last sort of two or three weeks I've been doing a sort of survey and I've been asking people this question do you believe that Christ loves you and I've been asking people randomly, um, all ethnicities, age groups, um, you know, just asking people, wherever I see them, do you believe that Christ loves you? And I spoke a lot about it, I spoke, um, said a lot of it yesterday, I asked people the question, do you believe that Christ loves you when we were at the car boot sale? And it's amazing the response. So it was a yes, a no, or you're not sure. And there was a second question. Do you read the Bible? And some people say, yes, I believe that Jesus loves me. And some people say, no. Some people said, I'm not sure. I said, do you read the Bible? Nah, I don't read the Bible. And that was, you know, disappointing. You know, if they don't read the Word of God, how are they going to know? If they don't seek for God, how are you going to know? But we know. We know that Christ loves us. That is for true. That is for sure. We know that. I wrote these words down. God tells us we are not unwanted children. We are not an accident. Neither are we a mistake. We are not unplanned or unwanted. It does not matter who we are and what we have done. Christ loves us. And that is true. Christ loves us. And he made this wonderful promise to us. If we go to Romans 8, please. Romans 8, 38. We have a wonderful God. So Romans 8, 38, please. It says, for I, am persuaded, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. It says, no height, no depth, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, there is nothing can separate us from God. If our heart is for God, there is nothing can divide us from him. Nothing on this planet. Nothing. He made that promise to us 
Nothing can separate us, our relationship. We have a bond, ain't we? Yeah? We have a bond. It's fixed in love. Yeah? Fixed in love. And nothing, nothing can separate us from his love that he has for us. Yeah? When you think about what parent does not love their children unconditionally? We uh, have young children here, ain't we? And uh, I know the parents love their children unconditionally. We love our children. So if we can love our children, don't you think that the father loves his children, which we are? All men, all women upon this foot, face of this earth, the people that have passed away, God has loved every single person unconditionally. This is why I wanted to say to people, do you believe that Christ loves you? Do you believe that? Some people said yes, some people said no, some people said I'm not sure. It's crazy statements really. No or not sure, and that's sad. But we saw that yeah, yesterday, you know, there was some, asked some people certain, certain um, uh, gave them the question basically, uh, do you love the Lord and stuff? And uh, some of the responses, the replies were incredible. You know, some people are in such darkness, and uh, and that's a shame. But you know what? We have found the light, and we have found the light of Christ. Yeah. Don't let your light go out for Christ. Whatever happens in this world, do not let your light go out for Christ. <clears throat> he has never made his light go out for you. Put your trust in him. Put your trust in him. Before we were conceived in our mother's womb, Christ loved us. In Jeremiah 1, verse 5, we don't have to turn to it. He saw us afar off, didn't he? Before we were even born, he knew us. When he was hanging upon the cross, he saw us far off. He knew that we would be born. He knew that we would be in this earth. He knew that we would call upon him in the future. He saw us. His great mind saw us. His great eye saw us, didn't it? Yeah? This is the God that we serve. He has watched us and he knows that we are sad, lonely, and in pain. And even if we cannot admit this because of pride, we know that pride cometh before fall, don't we? Some people are full of pride, full of pride. I saw a lot of pride yesterday. And that's sad. That's sad. Pride can take you into hell. Take you into hell. He knows that we are sinners and are desperate for answers to life problems. And he wants to help us because he cares and loves us. Let's go to Isaiah 41, please. Isaiah 41, verse 10. 
It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not, for I am with thee. And be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I would uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. God's promises are sure and true. He said he would uphold us with his righteousness. I believe that. Do you believe that? I believe that. 32 years ago, when I heard the gospel, and the word was shown to me. And I remember that night. I believe that. I believe God's word. I believe his truth. Not my truth. His truth. <coughs> I would challenge any person that is unsaved to read God's word and see God's love for yourself. Facts matter, not our opinions. Could I ask any, everybody here, was anybody here saved by opinions? Could they raise their hands, please? Is anybody, could they raise their hands? Were they saved by opinions? No? Was anybody here saved or by facts of the Bible? Was it the facts of the Word of God? Could you raise your hands, please? Yeah? Saved your hand? Yeah, you were saved by facts of the Bible? Yeah? Are you struggling there? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was the Word of God. It was the facts of the Bible that saved you. It was shown to you and it convicted you, didn't it? Yeah. The Bible says in 2 Peter 1.20, it talks about, you know, private interpretation. The Bible is not private interpretation. It's not our opinions. It's men moved by the Holy Spirit that wrote the scriptures so we can benefit today, isn't it? Yeah? <coughs> opinions can't help you. But facts... Bible facts, God's facts, can. Let's go to um, John 3, verse 16. It talks here about Jesus paid a debt he did not owe. And we owe the debt we could not pay. One of the great scriptures of the Bible, John 3, verse 16. One of my favorite scriptures, to be honest. Um, You know, there's another scripture that talks about, you know, loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. I think it's equal to that to me. Two wonderful scriptures, to love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. And this wonderful scripture, John 3, verse 16, what God did for us. Let's go to, it says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not, believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Jesus paid that debt because he loves us. He's loved all men unconditionally. As he said, he paid a debt he did not owe. He did not owe it. We owed a debt that we could never, ever pay. 
but he paid that because he loves us. He loves us. Let's go to Romans 5, please. Romans 5, verse 6. It says, for when we were yet without strength in due times, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, and yet perhaps for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Died for us. He died for us. How wonderful our God is. It's amazing how people cannot see that, cannot see the love of God, cannot see how much he has a love for them. This is what we were trying to state to people yesterday, that God loves you, that Christ loves you. You are so valuable. And some people believe that, you know, didn't want to know, you know. I mean, we handed out every leaflet I think we had. But there were still many that rejected what we had to say. Before we even opened up, <laughs> before we even opened our mouths, some cases like, you know, nope, nope. But vast majority of people were very um, uh, warm. You know, very warm. Bibles were sold. You know, even we prayed for people, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, we had this chat particular. <laughs> Tom can tell you. He, what, he was praying for us. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. But, you know, okay. Mm. I thought that was uh, amusing. We wanted to pray for him. But, but more importantly, we wanted to tell people about this truth, about God's <coughs> truth. Because souls are at stake. Let's go to Ephesians, please. Let's go to Ephesians 2, 4, please. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised up raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You know, this is where the church sits. This is where we sit. We feel the love of God, don't we? We experience the love of God each day that we live. We live in Him. I am so happy. I am rejoicing in Him. I think those people saw that in us yesterday. They saw how happy we were. Even when people rejected us, they saw we were happy. Why? Why are we happy? We're happy because we have the love of Christ in our hearts. And we're doing it for Him. We're glorifying Him. It's about Him. It should always be about Him. Jesus is the way maker. Praise the Lord. Okay. The act of love that Christ gave was the greatest ever <laughs> gift of love from God the Father to all mankind was the sacrifice of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who made an atonement for our sins at Calvary and was separated from God the Father because of this for a moment in time. I mean, earlier on, Seth spoke about this in the communion. For a moment in time, Christ was separated from the Father 
In Matthew 27, 45, it says, This is how much he loves us. For he was separated because of us. Let's go and let's look at that for a moment. Let's go to Matthew 27, please. Matthew 27, verse 45. It says, Now the sixth hour of there, now this now the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud, vo loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God turned away from his son for us. Never before in millennia, as Christ, as Seth said, been separated from the Father. But he let that happen for us because he loves us. God looked upon his son and his son had taken the sins of the world and God had to separate the Father, to separate from the son for a moment in time. And he did that for us. He did that for us. Because he loved us. How wonderful our God is. Do you imagine the angels in heaven? Looking and seeing and observing what they were observing. Thinking, look how much he loves humanity. Look how much he loves humanity for him to be separated. But Jesus let that happen for us, for a moment in time, for us. That is how much he loves us. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. All our sicknesses, concerns, life issues, faults was nailed to the tree. But most importantly, Christ opened the doors of salvation to us all. He made a way. And those that love this truth have been born again by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 verse 4. The perfect love of God manifested. The <coughs> evidence, the evidence <coughs> of speaking in tongues. The perfect love of God manifested. How many people here were speaking tongues? Could raise their hands. Yeah? Praise the Lord. We all speak in tongues. The perfect love of God manifested in our lives. Brother Tom was saying uh, to many people yesterday, uh, you know, do you speak in tongues? Have you received the Holy Ghost? The perfect love of God manifested. Can any person still believe that Christ does not love them? Yeah? The conclusion. How do we get to know and understand the love of God? The answer, we pray and read God's word. We seek God out by faith. Yeah? By faith. We seek him out by faith. Let's go to Luke 11, please. Luke 11, verse 9. Where are you? Where are you? It says, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given, given you. Seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If we seek God out by faith, the doors will be opened open and it's because people do not seek God by faith that's why their hearts are so hardened
Let's go to read Hebrews 11, please, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. <laughs> if we seek God out by faith, we can find the love of God. We will see it. All we have to do is go upon our knees and call upon him and read his word to get an understanding. I would say this to any man, any woman that is unsaved. Read God's word. Pray. Seek God by faith and you will find him. He is not far away. He is not far away. He is not far away. Praise the Lord. He is not far away. I want to, um, just before I finish here, a uh, uh, social experiment here. <laughs> the person that you're sitting next to, yeah? Uh, to look at that person that you're sitting next to. And you turn to that person that you're sitting next to right now because I think everybody's sitting next to somebody here. and you turn to that person you turn to that person right now and you tell them that Jesus loves you you turn to that person and you tell them that Jesus loves you yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I felt I needed to do that yeah yes yeah but it's a wonderful thing that we know that Jesus Christ loves us, don't we? Yeah? Can any person still believe that Christ does not love them? We know that Christ loves us. We know that. And I am so happy that I am in the church of God. And I am so happy like, to do whatever I can do for him. I am so happy to do it. Because I know that there are rewards at the end of the day. And Jesus talks about, you know, those that love me, you know. Uh, no mind uh, can see or I think it's conceive or I can't remember how it goes, but, you know, basically um, glory awaits us. Glory awaits us. And uh, I look forward to that wonderful.